So in this video, I want to talk about the interaction between System Center Service Manager 2012 R2 and System Center Operations Manager 2012 R2, really related to the way alerts in Operations Manager are made into instance in Service Manager, which can then be made into problems, and how resolving those instance in Service Manager results in them actually closing the alerts in Operations Manager. So the first thing is I've created the connector in Service Manager of type Operations Manager Alert Connector. Now, when we look at the properties of this alert connector, we basically tell it the Operations Manager server we connect to, a service account that it's actually going to run as to communicate with Operations Manager, it has those rights. I can specify particular routing rules for different types of alerts. So maybe I have different templates, maybe for alerts from the exchange system go to an exchange template. But there is a catch-all. There's a built-in Operations Manager instant template that for my environment, just everything will go to. I'm gonna grab it every 30 seconds. This is a development, a test environment, so I wanna capture them very, very quickly. But typically I wouldn't capture it that fast. I've also checked the option to close the alerts in Operations Manager when the instance are resolved or closed in Service Manager. And likewise, if it detects the alert has been closed in Operations Manager, it will go ahead and resolve the incident created in Service Manager. So that's the Service Manager side. In Operations Manager, if I go to Administration, Product Connectors, Internal Connectors, what I will see is once I establish that is I'll see an alert sync and the name will be the same as that created in Service Manager. And I actually need to go and configure this because by default, even though I enabled the connector in Service Manager, nothing is being sent to it. So I actually go and look at the properties. I will add a subscription, which is what I've done here. If I edit the subscription, what I actually did in this environment is I really did it for all of the different groups forward alerts from all targets automatically. And I basically did it for error and warning. High and medium, new, for all of the different types. So basically I've said, really do pretty much everything. So any kind of alert that gets generated, I'm gonna go ahead and actually send it to Service Manager. Now the way I'm gonna test this is I actually went ahead and I actually created a rule. So there's different ways you could do this, but I actually wanted to be able to generate my own kind of alerts on demand. So I created a new rule and it basically checks for an event log. And if I actually just look at this, so I'm only seeing the scope for Windows Server Operating System, which is what I scope this to, and which is what this applies to. If I look at my rule, what you can basically see is my data source is from the application log. And basically I'm looking for an event ID of one, two, three, four. That has to come from a source called test source. And then basically I'm gonna go ahead and create uh, the alert, a medium priority alert. So once that's created, it will actually go and trigger out to my various servers that I'm monitoring. If I go to my monitoring, I look at my active alerts. So only I don't have any. If I go to the server, what I did is I've got some PowerShell. So the first one creates a source called test source. So I've run that already. And I'm gonna go ahead and generate this event. So I've written to the event log, creating the event. If I go to my event viewer, what I should see if I sort it, what I know is first. So there it is. There's that event I just created. Now, if you want to make sure that new raw I created actually took effect, I could always go to Ops Manager. And what I'd be looking for are really the type 1201s and 1210s. So the 1201 tells me, hey, I actually got this, I received it. And then 1210 says, yes, I've actually applied that new configuration. So I would actually, in my case, be looking for my um, test event one. So I've got various ones going on down here. So that's how you can check it actually took effect. So I can see that event log got created. I'm gonna create a second one. And that's the benefit of using a raw and not a monitor. 
the monitor, if I use that in Operations Manager, it would actually not get the multiple instances. It would maybe time out after a while as well. So I'm gonna create these two alerts. If I jump to Ops Manager view, so this is the machine I'm monitoring, I've created those on. So now I can see automatically created those alerts. So I can see them. And the reason you're seeing this view is I customize the view. And so I take out the group by, I don't really like that. I sorted it by last modified and I actually went ahead and added the connector, the forwarding status. I also add the last modified and ticket ID. So that's going to show me as it's actually sent into Service Manager. So I do modify this view. And so if I scroll along, I can see forwarding pending. So it's not actually sent into Service Manager yet. But what I should see fairly quickly, let's refresh this. Okay, so that's already gone into Service Manager. So I can now see it's got that. This one is still forwarding pending, so that's going to go in there soon. If I jump over to Service Manager, it's gonna come in as a work item. And there's actually a default built-in view of all open operations manager instance, that's just built in. So I can already see one of them have come over. If I kind of give it enough time, what I should also see is that second one should come in. So it's still not there yet. If I go and check in my Ops Manager and refresh that. still says forwarding pending. So it normally takes about 60 seconds to actually go in. So now I've given it enough time. I can now see it got sent over. Service manager, I'll refresh again. And now there's the two of them. So I have these two incidents. Now what typically you're gonna to wanna to do is when you have multiple incidents, I'm gonna to wanna to make that a problem inside service manager. So I can actually go ahead and select both of them. And you can see what I can actually do from here is I can go ahead and create a problem. So it's gonna create a new item that's gonna have related items, those two incidents. So I'm gonna say event one, two, three, four problem. You would fill in additional details, but I can say a category, impact, etc., etc. I would fill all this stuff in Notice it knows machines because it got that from the alerts coming from operations manager. So it knows what items are being affected. If I look at my related items, I will see those two incidents. So basically now ahead, I've got a problem that I've actually created in the system. And once I've got the problem, I would then work on that problem. So I would do things, one of the outputs of the problem maybe I could actually take the problem and I can create a change request, which will then go through some workflow. Maybe it's a release record, whatever that sequence is. But let's say I've run through that change request that I created that linked to the problem, and now I'm done. So I can actually go, and the first thing I wanna do is set it to resolve. If I resolve something, I can reopen it. If I close it, I can't. So I always resolve first. So I'm gonna resolve it and hit apply. And now what I can actually do is, I should have entered some details, but I can also tell it once you've hit resolve, this will now become ungrayed out. So I can say auto resolve all incidents associated with this problem. So I'm gonna go ahead and say it was hardware, all fixed now. And so when I click okay, what I'm gonna see, so if I jump to Ops Manager right now and refresh active, they're still there. And those two incidents are still there as well. I'm going to click OK. And then what will happen very quickly, so they're still there, but within 10, 20 seconds, so now they've gone. It's closed them because I said to automatically resolve, I check that box and I enabled that in the connector. I said, okay, go and close all the instance associated with the problem. And because it's checked in the connector, I'm gonna go to Operations Manager and refresh. So one of them already detected just on its own natural refresh. So this one's again, it has to sync and check that status because the timing was just off for a little bit. 
but literally within 30 seconds, it's already closed one of those, and this one should close as well. So basically you saw the connection of, there was an alert, the alert was then sent via the connector into service manager as an incident, and then had multiple incidents, so I created a problem from those incidents in service manager. When I resolved the problem, once it was resolved, I could then go in and check that box and say auto resolve any related instance as well. It closed the incidents and it then has effectively sent that status back and closed to an operation manager. Actually, I've just noticed this is a different one. So it did close both of those. Just in the meantime, I've actually had a separate incident come in. So it did actually close. I just didn't notice that. It did close both of those incidents. This is an OLADB, completely unrelated. And actually what I should have seen is when I refresh this, yep, it's now created that in Service Manager. So I, I can see that link going on. So really just wanted to kind of show that workflow of alerts to instance to problems. I do something from that problem. I close the problem, close the instance, it closes the alert. That's really that complete life cycle. Hope this was useful. Appreciate your time. Take care.